Welcome to a perspective roundtable of the New England Journal of Medicine. I'm Tom Lee, an associate editor of the journal, and I'll be moderating a discussion today of two papers that are being published online this week of one of the most common and complex issues in medicine, screening for prostate cancer with prostate-specific antigen testing. With me are two colleagues with complementary clinical and academic expertise in this field. We have Mary McNaughton Collins, a general medicine uh, internist and health services researcher at Mass General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. And we have Phil Kantoff, who is the director of the Lang Center for Genital Urinary Oncology at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you. First, let's try to put this topic in context. You know, Phil, it's bread and butter medicine but most physicians are confused, ambivalent, and even worse, inconsistent in what they do. Why is this topic so hard? Well, first of all, the PSA has been around for about 20 years, and to this date, there's no primary evidence that PSA-based screening reduces prostate cancer mortality. So we're operating without primary evidence of a benefit from the screening technique. Um, the Use of PSA is associated clearly with an earlier diagnosis of prostate cancer, and we've also seen a reduction in the mortality from prostate cancer over the past 20 years during the period of time that it's been used. But we still don't know if it actually works, if there's a cause and effect relationship between uh, use of PSA and reduction of mortality. There's also the issue of trade-offs. Uh, when you use a PSA, you diagnose prostate cancer, and the benefits of diagnosing that prostate cancer generally in its early form are not seen for probably 10 to 15 years, yet the downside effects of PSA screening are immediate if a patient undergoes treatment. Mary, why don't you summarize the skeptics position, uh, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force guidelines for us? The guidelines are in conflict in large part because of the uh, absence of of convincing evidence that prostate cancer screening uh, produces more good than harm in men. And the skeptic um, definitely is concerned, I'd echo what Phil said, with the known harms, in particular, overdiagnosis and overtreatment, meaning finding and treating harmless cancers. So those harms, as Phil said, are incurred by men in the near term, and they endure. Then the potential uncertain benefit um, in terms of mortality or, or morbidity reduction is not realized until down the line, if at all. So the United States Preventative Services Task Force has concluded that the evidence is insufficient to assess the balance of benefits and harms um, in men 75 years and, and younger. So they do not, um, cannot make a decision on screening there. However, they have come down outright against screening for men 75 years and older. So, Phil, your professional society and the urologist professional society have a different perspective, right? Um, correct. Um, the American Urological Association was very quick in, um, in supporting the use of PSA-based screening, uh, which includes PSA and digital rectal exam, uh, initially in men of the age of 50 and have reduced their age cutoff to about 40. Two other societies, the American Cancer Society, which incidentally was one of the first out of the box in recommending uh, uh, screening for prostate cancer, and the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, NCCN, taking a slightly modified approach in suggesting that there should be some sort of discussion with the patient about the risks and benefits, um, but at the end of the day, they do support uh, screening for prostate cancer with the PSA and digital rectal exam in men starting at the age of 50 in the uh, case of the American Cancer Society, at the age of 40 in the case of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network. For the American Cancer Society, they have suggested that men at high risk, African American men, men with a positive family history, that screening should start earlier. In reality, in the United States, over 50% of men over the age of 55 undergo screening or report screening with PSA within the past couple of years. Okay, so let's get to the studies. Uh, Mary, you know, you've got the skeptic's position to defend, so why don't you tell us about the first of these studies, the PLCO study? Sure, Tom. 
So PLCO, prostate, lung, colorectal, and ovarian cancer screening study is a large randomized trial from the United States. Um, the prostate component was designed to determine the effect of annual PSA screening and DRE on prostate cancer specific mortality. They enrolled about 76,000 men um, across 10 centers over the years 1993 to 2001. And the result, Tom, no mortality reduction um, uh, with combined PSA and DRE screening over 11 years median follow-up. Okay, Phil, you've read this paper carefully. Mm -hmm. So what do you think it proves and what do you think it does not prove? Um, in the PLCO study, the cutoff for doing a biopsy was four nanograms per milliliter. If we set up a study right now, that probably would not be the criteria for doing a biopsy. It would probably be lower or we would use age-adjusted PSAs in order to trigger a biopsy. And of course, by using a higher criteria, you could miss some potential cancers and potentially some lethal cancers. The second issue with the study is the issue of contamination. 52% of the men who were in the non-screened arm had a PSA documented within the past few years uh, in this study, as opposed to 85% in the screened arm. And as a result of it, it's not surprising to me that there was only a modest increase in the number of cancers that were diagnosed in the screened arm, only 20%. But I think the most problematic part of the study is the relatively short follow-up period, uh, average follow-up of 11 years, but the number of outcomes were actually very modest. One-tenth of one percent of the entire population actually died of prostate cancer. Not surprisingly that the mortality from prostate cancer within the first 10 years is small, but with the numbers that they generated of about 50 and 44 in each arm, it's really hard to make a statement about differences in outcomes given that uh, limitation.